Hello, welcome everyone. Welcome to this session about Longchain 4J. So I'm just starting with a little advertisement. There's a new book that went out today on Longchain 4J from my friend Antonio. So if you want to win it, there's a little game on Twitter. My Twitter handle is just afterwards. And have a look and come after the talk to get your book if you want to play the game. So I'm Julien Dubois. I will be your speaker today for this talk about Longchain 4J and doing RAG with Longchain 4J. Uh, Let's go quickly first about what is Longchain 4J. So Longchain 4J, it's a Java tool uh, that is uh, the Java version of a very famous uh, framework in Python and JavaScript, which is called Longchain, so Longchain for Java. Uh, it aims to simplify the usage of AI models in Java, which is exactly what we're going to do today. And it's fully open source. It's done by a community of um, uh, numerous people, including myself. It's very active, it's very nice. So if you are interested in Longchain 4J, or if you want to help, well, please join us. It's all free and open source. Why would you lose Longchain 4J? Uh, well, you can totally use AI without any framework. It's like you can use, you can do a, a, a web a REST uh, endpoints without Spring Boot. But if you have a framework, usually it helps a little bit. Uh, so Longchain 4J is here to give you an abstraction layer about numerous, numerous tools, typically LLMs or vector databases, which are what we're going to use today. Uh, it also gives you integrations on top of this layer of abstraction. That's what we need for the rack pattern. So you will see it gives you a lot of tooling and lots of helps to get you productive much quicker than if you code everything by hand. Again, exactly like Spring Boot for doing the REST API, you've got Longchain 4J for doing AI and doing the rack pattern. If you want to do the same as what I'm going to do now, uh, well, the demo is here, it's open source. Uh, I update it, uh, so it's a version from today. <laughs> uh, it moves quite fast. Uh, the demo is more compl uh, complete than just the rack pattern, but today we'll concentrate on it. It's uh, honestly the most interesting part. Uh, RAG, so why are we talking about RAG? So RAG is Retrieval Augmented Generation. I'm going a little bit fast because I'm guessing that if you came here, you already know all of this. Uh, and the goal of RAG is to fix two of the main issues with LLMs, which is first, they have a cut of date, so they were trained like three years ago, so they don't know what happened last week. And two, they don't know private data or internal company data, so if you ask them, what's my company policy when I travel to DevOps? Well, it doesn't know, because it doesn't, I mean, that's not public data. Uh, those two issues are pretty important usually, and that's why we, there are different ways to fix them. So let's say most common or maybe best way to fix them is to use a rack pattern. So the idea is to get either new or private data, or both, inside something called a vector store. Or, well, there are different types of stores, but most people would use a vector store. Once its data is inside the vector store, well, query it and, add, and use it to give more context to your large language model. So at the end, the large language model can answer your question based on the data from the vector store. This is where Longchain 4J is really good because it's got integrations for a lot of LLMs and a lot of vector stores, and it's got this thing called EasyRag to help you do the rag pattern. So we're going to see that it takes about 10 lines of code to do all of this, but the 10 lines of code are a little bit complex. That's why we need, I would say, alpha and to detail what's going on. So you understand what it does, and also you know um, how you can enhance it or tune it depending on your specific needs. Uh, we'll see the default settings are pretty good, but if you want something even better, well, you need to tune it. So, let's do it. Uh, first of all, a few slides which are a little bit abstract, and then we'll go into the code. So, we're going to do it in two parts. First of all, we're going to ingest some data, and then we're going to query that data. So, the first part is ingestion. Ingestion uh, is probably the most complex part. We need to get that data, uh, load it into vector store, uh, and then would be able to use it, but getting that data is a bit complex. So, first of all, uh, we need to get that data, that data from somewhere. So there are different ways to get that data. You can get it from a URL, which is what we will do in a minute. But you can get it from blob storage, from a GitHub repository. There are lots of loaders which are available in Longchain 4J. Once you got that data, you usually need to transform it. It's probably not totally clean. Here we will get HTML data, so we don't want to have all the HTML tags in it. We want to clean it up a little bit. Then you need to split it. Splitting it is probably the difficult part, and maybe the most important part of what we are going to see. Uh, the idea is to split your data into segments. 
Uh, so segments can be big or small, depending on what you decide. Uh, it's better if the segments make sense, so if they are a paragraph or a sentence um, or a line. And Longchain4j provides you with all of this. Uh, by default, there's something a little bit smart, which is called a recursive algorithm. And recursive will try to fit the text data that you asked, either into a paragraph, or if it's too big, into a line, or if it's too big, into, uh, into a sentence. So it's going to try to have the best size, I mean, the best uh, um, uh, meaningful amount of text in the size that you asked it to have. Uh, there's two parameters, so that the size of the segment of text, you want 300 characters, and the overlap between two segments of text. Usually it makes sense to have an overlap between two segments of text. Uh, there's a nice tool here to test this. I'm going to go to that tool right now. Uh, so that's the example we'll use. It's a Microsoft uh, annual report, so it's lots of text. That's why I take it. And I'm going to paste it into this tool. Uh, that's the link I, uh, we had uh, earlier in the PowerPoint presentation. And so by default here, the cutting it into uh, uh, sizes of 1,000 characters with 200 of overlap. I find it a bit big, uh, but I mean, let's try it. So you see what it does. So that's, oh, by the way, that's a real long chain. That's Python. We're going to do long chain 4J. It's the same, but in Java. Hopefully, the network is with us. <laughs> Otherwise, you can try it at home with a better network. Oh, come on. Yeah, here it is. So I find this one a bit big, so usually I put less. We'll do less in a minute. Uh, and here we've got so text segments, which are so normally of 1,000 uh, characters with a 200 characters of overlap. And if you want to see what it does, if you give it less, well, you can put 300 and, and 30, uh, 60, and, and try it. And you will see now we've got smaller text segments. Hopefully, they make sense. So here again, so it's a phrase or a paragraph. I like this one better. That's why I'm using this one. Let's go back to the presentation. Now that's very important. If you give too much data to your LLM, it will be uh, uh, bloated by all of this data. So the results will be really bad. Uh, if you give it not enough data, of course, it won't have the data to answer you. So there's a uh, some tuning, and that needs to be done by you, depending on your data, because you know your data probably better than anybody else. And uh, you need to give it enough data, but not too much data, which is the difficult thing to achieve. Uh, once you got that data, when you got this text segment, you want to transform it into a vector. So that looks complicated, uh, but it's not. Uh, so we've got tools for that. Uh, they are called embedding models. There are many of them which are available. And the idea here is tr to transform your text segment into a vector. So a vector is an array of float. So here you've got an example. It's a, it's a very small one. It's an array of float. Uh, and those vectors point to different dimensions. Uh, very often, we use 1,536 di dimensions. So it's a lot more than our 3D world, lots of dimensions. And uh, vectors who have the same meaning point to the same dimension. So usually, the example I, I take is about fruits. You take apples, bananas, and strawberries, and if you ask for a fruit, they are all going to point in the same direction as a fruit. And of course, they've got lots of dimensions. So maybe uh, a banana points to other dimensions, like, you know, like yellow. <laughs> and, and you can probably find other meaning uh, for, for this uh, vector. So we're going to take our text segments, transform them into those vectors, and store them that's the last part, into a vector database. There are lots of them. Uh, Longchain 4 j supports many of them. Uh, here we're going to use one which is called Qdrant because it's very easy to use inside Docker. Uh, but you can use many other ones. They are all very good. Um, usually, they use an algorithm called cosine similarity. There are different algorithms, but this one is, let's say, the most common one. It basically calculates the angles to see which vectors point to the same directions. And the vector stores are here to very quickly find all the vectors that point into a given dimension. Uh, usually, in the vector store, you don't only store the vectors, you also store some metadata. So you want first the text, uh, because otherwise you, <laughs> you will only have the vectors, you want the text to be stored. And you also usually store some references, like I got this text from this file. Because usually, 
uh, when you use an LLM, you want to have some references. It tells you, okay, here is my answer because I saw it into that document. So you usually want to add more data than just the vectors. And oh, sorry, there are also more advanced vector stores, but it's beyond this presentation, that use other tools, typically Lucen, so using uh, a full text search, to have better, uh, um, uh, um, to find better segments. Like here, we're going to try to find the three best segments. We hope the vector database will do a good job. But if you want something better, there are other ways to find them, and then to match the scorings and find the best documents for a given question. I just want to see it's just there is more than just vectors. Uh, here is a graphical representation of what we just did. So we take the document uh, on the left, we split it into segments. Those segments are then transformed into arrays of floats, into vectors. And uh, both the segments of text and the vectors are stored together in an embedding store, so in a vector database. How is it done with EasyWag from Longchain4j? It's just here a few lines of code. So here we load a document, so again, which is a Microsoft uh, report. I'm taking this one because it's a new one. Uh, uh, I wanted something which is not already into my LLM. I wanted to, to show something which is a little bit private, but also which is very recent, so I know uh, uh, it is not biased by the training of my LLM. Uh, when I got, once I got uh, this data loaded, I'm sp I'm sp I'm, uh, first of all, I'm uh, cleaning it with the HTML to text document transformer. So I'm taking here a CSS class to take only the HTML I want. I'm transforming it into text, because that's what I'm interested in. I don't want all the uh, uh, HTML tags. Then I sp I'm spli splitting it. So that's the recursive algorithm we talked about. So it's going to try to split them into paragraphs, if the paragraph is too big into a line, if it's too big into a, vec into a, into a, a sentence. And the two parameters, the 300 is the number of characters, and 30 is the number of overlaps. So that's what we just saw in the example before. Once we did all that, we want to use an embedding model to transform this into vectors. We'll have a look at what it is. And then we're going to store it into a vector store. And that's all you need to do to have it working. So let's have a look at the code uh, for real. So here it is. I've got everything running inside Docker. Uh, and let me just show you the configuration here. So um, what's interesting here is the embedding model and the embedding store. So the embedding model we're using here is called MiniLM. It's here. It's done in Java. Uh, so it's running the model itsi itself inside my GVM. It's not very good, but it's very fast. It runs into my GVM. So for testing, that's what I like. You've got better ones here, like typically here with Olama. Uh, I'm having nomic embedded text, which I like better usually, uh, but that won't work very well inside Docker because you need a GPU. If you don't have a GPU, that will be super slow, and the demo will not work very well. Well, it will time out. Uh, if you want to use something from the cloud, uh, well, now I'm using GitHub models. Uh, so this is running inside the cloud, and here I'm using something called text embedding 3 small, which is even better, and which runs in the cloud with some good GPUs, so I can have something even better, but I need to have this set up in the cloud, and maybe I need to pay for it. So here I'm interested to have everything running locally inside Docker, so I'm using this. Uh, so that's my uh, embedding model. And then my vector store, here it is. Uh, so the vector store I'm using is called QDRAND. Uh, you've got lots of other ones. Uh, what I like about QDRAND is that it's uh, very small and easy to run inside Docker. Uh, you just need a little bit of configuration here, but that's Basically, all I need it, uh, you need to create your collection that you're going to use. And just to show you how it is inside Docker, so inside Docker, if I, I've got QDRAN, so I've got my vector database running. I already started it before because I didn't trust the network. Uh, and Olama is a chat that, uh, LLM that we use just afterwards. So, uh, And well, let's run this to have a look at what's going on. So my demo, oh, sorry, I didn't start my server. Come on. So I started my server, and I'm going to ingest my data. So we've got lots of demos if you want to have a look at my uh, demo repository. We, we're using the, the two last ones, so data ingestion and GenWag. So here I'm going to ingest the data. It's already done. So the network is pretty good. <laughs> uh, so what it did is that 
uh, he took the text uh, from um, uh, uh, the Microsoft annual report. Uh, and yeah, here it is, starting to in just one document. It split it into 1,563 text segments, sentences or, 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 or paragraphs. We'll have a look. Uh, it transforms them into embeddings, and then it stores them into the embedding store. So let's have a look at the embedding store to, to, to better understand what happened. So the embedding store is here. It's, so Q1 is here. I'm going to refresh this. And here we've got our index with 1,563 segments. And if we look at the segments, well, let's take one by random. Uh, this one, uh, we've got indeed something a little bit small, so 300 characters probably. Uh, we've got the text, we've got the URL, we've got the vector here, which is so big array of floats. And uh, you can have a look at finding similar vectors. So again, it's very really good at finding similarities. So if I click here, here are all the vectors that point in the same direction as this one. Or not, oh, a lot more maybe. Yeah, well, this one indeed looks a little bit similar. We can trust, he did some good calculation. So again, I took the document, I passed it, split it, transformed it into vectors, send it to my vector database, and I'm ready you now for my second part. Uh, let's just have a look at what we just discussed in terms of best practices. I cleaned up my text. Uh, again, I removed the unnecessary characters. I tested, normally if I did something good, I tested with different splitters, segment size and overlap size. Uh, that's really the, the part when you can mess up. If you have uh, text segments which are too big, you will see the answers are really bad. Uh, you can test with different embedding models uh, and different dimensions. Uh, the more dimensions you have, the slower it is. Uh, and you've got better embedding models than the one I used, uh, but they're also slower. So it depends if you want to run everything easily on your laptop or not. Uh, and then in production, uh, of course, you can say, oh, the bigger one, the more, di the more dimensions I have, the better. Well, maybe not, because maybe it's very costly and you don't need them. So you, you need to be smart also uh, on, on at taking the best model for the best price. Uh, you need to use metadata, as you saw. I, I'm storing so the text, but also some metadata like the URL from to, to tell where that text is coming from. Uh, and you need to be ready to re-index everything very often. Uh, first of all, because you might want to change how you split your data, you might want to change your embedding model, uh, but also because you're going to have new data all the time. I mean, that, that's the point of what we're doing. We want to be able to answer questions on newer data. So you need to be ready to always ingest new data. So that's not a one-time process. That's something you will repeat. So that's why you need here to have something which is pretty industrial. Once you got this, we can go to which we will augmented generation. It's in fact easier. Uh, so here's the goal is to take a question, usually some from, from somebody, transform it into an embedding, so a vector like we just did before. We need to use the same process. It needs to be using the same embedding model and the same number of dimensions in order to find each, uh, well, the, the, the similarities. And uh, then we're going to ask the vector store, well, which vectors uh, are related to the one we just sent you? And Again, there are more advanced solutions to find the best vectors, but th that's, I mean, the whole idea is here, trying to find the best text segments which are similar to the question you had. Once you got this, uh, you're going to augment the user's question with those text segments. So you're going to take the user's question, add those text segments, so this context, and you're going to ask a large language model to answer you with an answer. Uh, you've got lots of large language models to use. Uh, so the officially best ones are GPT-40 and GPT-40 Mini from OpenAI, because uh, that's the latest one from the most uh, well-known company. Uh, they're pretty big. If you want something smaller, there's Fee 3.5 from Microsoft, which is pretty good and which runs on a lot of, you know, like all the Copilot PCs, all of those. It's pretty good. If you have a GPU, it's, it's wonderful. On a on Mac, on a GPU, it works very well. Uh, and then maybe you want something even smaller. So here, again, I'm running everything inside Docker. I'm doing this for two reasons. First of all, I don't want to use my GPU for my demos and everything because uh, you know, often I record myself. Uh, I also want to be able to uh, run everything in my CI CD pipelines, and I don't have a, a GPU over there. So I want to run everything inside Docker. And for this, I need something even smaller uh, because, well, I don't have the 
the enough power. Right? I don't have a GPU to, to answer the, the questions. So here I put two very small ones, the Zlama 3.2, which is supposed to be super good, but I have never used it because it's forbidden to use it in Europe, so we cannot use it. Uh, so it's probably good, but I cannot test. Uh, the one I'm using is Tiny Lama, uh, which is incredibly small, so very nice. You see the answer is good enough, but it's honestly not very good, uh, usually. Uh, uh, in the different demos I have, you've got some reasoning demos. It's really bad at reasoning. It's really bad at numerous things. In fact, here, I would say I've got 30% chances that my demo will fail. It will answer something bad, so then I will reload. Well, if we have some time, we'll reload to make it fail on pupils. So it's usually good enough, but it's really not that good. Again, there's a lot of work here to find the best model, depending on what you are ready to spend or what you need. Uh, so what we just said is that you take the user question and you add more context with it. So that's exactly what Longchain4j is doing. It's take, it's, that's a, the prompt from Longchain4j that I copy-pasted. So it's taking the user question, it adds some text, answer using the following information, and then it adds your uh, text segments. Again, if they are too big, or if you ask for too many segments, it will overload everything and you will have a very bad answer. So here's something good is to have small text segments and have, well, I'm, I'm putting three here. Usually I, I don't take much more than this. Uh, you can improve that prompt, by the way, like every prompt, you can change it. Uh, I usually uh, like to have a prompt where I say, uh, please don't have a look at uh, the data you were trained on. So do, don't use prior data. Uh, and also, I don't um, invent data. If you don't know, tell me you don't know. You know, there's a tendency with LLMs to hallucinate, and I don't want this. So usually, I, I, I do what I believe is a better prompt, but that's the default prompt, which is good enough. So graphically, what does it do? Uh, so you've got the query from the user on the left. You transform it into a vector with an embedding model. You query the vector store. You ask it, well, give me three segments which are related to that one and put that into the prompt, so query and the relevant segments, and you send everything to the LLM that will answer you. In terms of code, here is what it does. So you've got a chat language model here. We're going to have a look at how it's uh, configured. And then I'm retrieving my content, so using the embedding store we configured earlier, the embedding model we configured earlier, and I'm a S3 is the number of answers that I want, so I'm asking for three text segments. Again, if I ask for more, it's going to slow everything down, but most importantly, I will have some really bad results. So let's have a look at this code. So that's the question we do right here. And the new thing here is that this time we use the chat language model. So in the demo, you've got different chat models. So here we're using Olama. So Olama is a tool uh, uh, that, I mean, it's a process that you can run on your laptop. It runs here inside Docker. Uh, and Olama can run a number of models. So here, I'm, again, I'm using Tiny Lama. That's the one I talked about, which is very small and fast, but not very good. If you want a better one, here typically I've got Fee 3.5 from Microsoft. Uh, if you've got Olama running on your laptop directly with a GPU, I would rather use that one because the results are better. If I want to run inside Docker, I would use that one because it's faster. It's a choice. And they are all running here inside Docker. Uh, you can see I did some tests before. I loaded everything here. I was in the train, so it, it had some time out, but it worked in the end. So you have it all running here. So let's have a look and, and uh, uh, let's check the answer we got. I'm switching fast here to see the console. So we can see what's going on. So, um, oh, it already did everything. Okay, <laughs> too fast. So it uh, it requested uh, uh, our uh, large language model, Tiny Lama, with the question we had. So how many people are employed by Microsoft in the US? So that's a question from the user, and we tell it answer that question with the following information that's coming from Longchain 4J, and those are my three text segments. Hopefully they are good. And here is the answer we got from Longchain 4J. Let's have a look at it graphically. And, 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 uh, and that answer is not very good. It looks good, but because I know the real answer. So as I told you, it's not always perfect. 
I think we'll have time to use the better one. And this one is wrong. Whoa, not lucky today. Hey, it's always wrong. Whoa. That's incredible because, so it's 120, oh, this one is good. <laughs> oh, okay. So usually it's not as bad as this. It's a bit bad, but not as bad as this. I, I think we were pretty lucky with Tiny Lama. The good thing here is that I have everything running inside Docker and I can run it. Let me show you here. Yeah. Oh. Sorry about that. Oh, it's because this is too big. I can, for example, I can use it for running test here. So here I'm using test containers to run everything. Well, let me just go here. So test containers is using Docker Compose to start Qdrunt and Olama inside Docker. So I can then use Spring MVC REST, uh, the, the test part, to, well, to, to have a look if it's running correctly. So here I'm ingesting the data and I'm waiting for the OK result. And here I'm doing the right part and I'm looking for the 120,000 people uh, employed by Microsoft in the US. So when I do that, in my CI/CD platform, I know that everything runs correctly, which is pretty good. And usually it works, uh, but again, it doesn't work all the time. Let me try it again. It's pretty bad. I don't know what happened, why it's so bad. Yeah, this one is good. Again, uh, so the, the main thing that will make your data fail is how you feed it. So it's the, the how you put vectors. And then the second thing is the LLM. So Two things. First, I'm going to, to use a better uh, LLM. Uh, let's use the one from GitHub. Uh, so, hang on, let me just change this and restart. So, I don't know if you know GitHub models because it was released not that long ago. You just need a GitHub token to access them, and you've got lots of models here, and, and uh, well, you You've got some quota for free quota for all of them, so you can use lots of them. Uh, you've got OpenAI, of course, you've got Fish 3.5, you've got lots of them. And they're all now, I mean, they will very soon be inside Longchain 4J in the next release. Everything was merged uh, recently. And if I use that, normally my result will be better. So now I'm using, uh, oh, sorry, I didn't show you the code. Now I'm using. Uh, GitHub models, I'm using this. So I'm using a GPT for O mini. And GPT for O mini is supposed to be better. So we'll have a look. Yeah, GPT for O is much better. Like this time we have a clean, clear answer and it didn't mess up. If I restart it again, because I'm feeling lucky, yeah, always good. Yeah, always good. So as you can see, having a better model gives you a better answer, of course. Now, what happens if I feed it some? Uh, like too much data, because I said many times it was probably the worst idea. Uh, let's um, let's say, okay, instead of having three answers, I want 50 answers. Not very nice. Uh, so this time I'm giving it too much stuff. Probably GPT for how many? Oh, come on, it's loading. It's still good, okay. <laughs> but I'm taking more risk. Here, here we're giving it clearly too much data. So here, here a bad LLM wouldn't succeed because there's just too much junk here. So data is, the good data is somewhere here, but there's just too much of it. So pretty good. Okay. Um, as we don't have much time left, let me go back to my slides. So uh, best practices, uh, do not send too much data to the prompt. Again, that you can have very bad answers. Uh, and it costs money. Yeah, it costs tokens. You pay for them. So don't send that data for no reason. Uh, test the chat models. Some are better, some are worse, uh, some are more expensive. <laughs> some are better from some specific uh, usage. Some understand coding better, some understand Chinese better. So you need to test. Uh, you can improve the prompt if you want to. Uh, you can add integration tests like I did with test containers. I think it's a good practice. And if you, got, if you want some, something good in production, you need to have GPUs. Uh, that's, like, that's why the NVIDIA stock is so high. You need GPU, you need to, to have them if you want some really good models. 
Uh, if you uh, want to, uh, well, so to use uh, RAG, so as we saw, you've got lots of very good defaults with Longchain 4J. It's really well made, and you can extend them and tune it. Uh, so very good to do your RAG-based application in no time. If you want to understand everything about it and do something better, we've got a full workshop here. So that's not the same demo, it's a full one. We do it tomorrow morning with Antonio, who wrote that, that book. Uh, so we don't use the resurrect pattern. Here we code everything. It takes three hours. Uh, <laughs> so it's longer, but you understand everything better. Uh, and then you can use the resurrect pattern because it's faster, but at least you understood why you're doing it. And we're out of time. So thank you. Uh, if you want to win the book, come and see me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>